Hey, what's going on? Hey, it's me, Nick, Nick DeGilio. Thanks for checking out my YouTube uh, channel. It's free, subscribe, new videos pretty much daily, uh, and I'll keep them coming. I also share a lot of videos on Patreon, patreon.com slash nickdshow. Uh, stay connected there, you'll get videos. And if you donate and become a patron, which was really, really helpful, it keeps the content coming. Uh, Patreon is a great uh, 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 format and website for people to uh, give their uh, donate to give their donations and help keep artists going, whether it be through music or short films or videos or things like that. And, uh, and I'm on there, and it'll help keep uh, the videos coming and, uh, and and my work coming. So please help out. Uh, it's patreon.com slash nickdshow. Be a patron now. My uh, podcast is the Nick D Podcast on the Radio Misfits Podcast Network. Check out radiomisfits.com. New episodes every Tuesday and Friday. Uh, I review movies on my podcast, and I also review movies right here on the YouTube channel. Two movies open up, two big movies, a few others uh, open this weekend in Chicago, and that would be April 1st. And they both suck. So I thought I'd talk about uh, these two movies and, and review them very quickly. Um, uh, uh, and, and, but they, they both suck, but they both suck in entirely different ways. They both suck in completely different for completely different reasons. But the fact is that they both suck. And the two movies that came out this week that suck are the new Marvel action superhero uh, thing, Morbius with uh, Jared Leto. That's the first one, the big major release that comes out this week. And it sucks. And the other one that sucks is uh, the new Daniels movie from The Daniels which is called uh, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, and uh, it stars uh, Michelle Yeoh, among others, and it sucks. But the thing is, that movie sucks for entirely different reasons. Morbius is just a big-budget, stupid uh, comic book movie that is indistinguishable from others. Everything, Everywhere, All at Once sucks on a whole different level, it sucks in a way that it doesn't know it sucks. In fact, it thinks it's clever, and it thinks it's really good, and it thinks it's really interesting, and it's philosophical, when in fact, it's a bunch of horse shit. Let me talk about Morbius really quickly. Morbius is the latest Marvel movie. I don't know. There's a difference between Marvel Studios and Sony, and this is a different Marvel production. Then I don't know. I don't give a shit. Fuck all these comic book movies. I've had it up to... Here, here, and here with all of this shit. I don't know. I don't give a shit about the history. I don't care about the comics. I go and watch the movie, and if they suck, they suck, and these movies suck. And I don't know the difference between what this background is and what this universe is, and the Sony-produced Marvel movies are different than the Marvel Studio movies, and blah, blah, fucking blah. Who cares? Is the movie entertaining? Does it keep me going? No, it's not. And 90% of the crap that comes out of, these th out of these studios, whether it be Sony or Warner Brothers and all these other DC, all that stuff, most of them suck. <clears throat> and it's gotten to the point where, you know, where I basically am agreeing with, 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 uh, with Scorsese and Coppola and all these guys. Like, I'm done with these fucking stupid comic book movies. Some of them are good. Some of them are entertaining. Some of them are much better than others. Uh, uh, you know... Yeah, I mean, you know, the Batman movie, the last Batman movie, fantastic. Fantastic. But it's much more than just a stupid comic book movie. Um, so, anyway. This one, this this Morbius, is a character... I don't know what... Look, I'm just going to say... I don't know what the fuck is going on, and I don't care. Morbius is played by Jared Leto. He's a doctor. Beginning of the movie, he's trying to seek a cure for this blood disease that he's had since he was a kid. That he's going to die. He's weak. All of his friends who've had this blood disease have died. He was in a hospital. He could barely walk when he was a little kid. He made friends with another little kid, and they together they were they were bonding. And you knew that this other little kid was going to turn out to be the fucking villain. Anyway, they bonded, and then he spent his entire life trying to find a cure for this rare blood disease that he has. Uh, but the only way to find a cure is to go somewhere in Costa Rica and find some bats, and then take a bat kidney out and put it in, and then make juice that he can inject into himself, and then he turns into a vampire. And he, he, you know, he kills a whole bunch of guys on a boat. That they're all bad guys, though, drug dealers with guns. He kills all of them, and then realizes he has this horrible vampirific disease that turns him into a blood-sucking maniac. 
and uh, and and he wants to you know he wants to stop that. Meanwhile, his buddy from his little kid friend from the institute that they used to be in gets a hold of the juice, the serum or whatever. He injects it into himself. He's got the same disease. He turns into a bloodthirsty vampire and goes on a rampage. And then it's up to Morbius to stop Milo uh, from killing people. Um, it's an origin story. Uh, it is a mess. The special effects are terrible, um, and it's got a solid cast. Uh, besides Jared Leto, who is, you know, Captain Method Actor Jagoff, uh, and he'll always be Jordan, uh, Jordan Catalano in my book. Besides that, you got Jared Harris, who is completely wasted. You got Matt Smith, one of the best doctors in the Doctor Who history. Very funny, beautiful, great actor. Totally wasted as the villain here. Tyrese Gibson and Al Madrigal play the cops. Al Madrigal, who is a stand-up comedian um, and a former uh, correspondent on, on uh, The Daily Show, is particularly bad in this movie uh, as the wacky, you know, comic relief. Um, and it's just, it, it, it's, it's awful on every level. I don't know the character, I don't know the comic, nor do I give two shits. Um, I guess he shows up in Spider-Man, he's like a villain with Venom, he hangs out with Venom, and I guess that's a character that, what, that well, Tom Hardy made two shitty movies about. Um, and then it's part of the Spider-Man universe, and I don't give a shit about the Spider-Man universe because the last Spider-Man movie, that No Way Home, one of the worst movies of last year, and I didn't give a shit about any of it. Meta nonsense. This has a little bit of that in it. But ultimately, you don't care about any of the characters. It's been... This, this plot, the characters, the, everything has been recycled a million times. <clears throat> There's not one original moment in the movie... You've seen it a million times, scientists. There's a lot of spinning test tubes and shit like that. And just, it is a bunch of nonsense. And um, uh, the, 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 the fight scenes, the chase scenes, they're all terrible. Um, they all remind one of The Matrix, which is interesting considering the next movie that I'm going to talk about. <clears throat> and it doesn't move on from there. Jared Leto just doesn't even care. Clear, clearly, he doesn't even care. My guess is that he didn't even stay in character on this one. This is how much he didn't give a shit about this. Uh, all the other terrific actors are completely wasted. It seems like a movie that's been cut cut up a lot. It's about an hour and 45 minutes. And for a... You know, you know these stupid-ass, dumb-ass comic book movies have to be two and a half hours long, especially if they're an origin movie. This thing's only an hour and 45 minutes, so that reeks of re-editing. Like, the studio came in and went, wow, this is a piece of crap. Let's begin chopping. And that's what they did. It's all chopped up. It makes no sense. They didn't care about anything. The effects are bad. The character is just completely unmemorable. Uh, any kind of vampire sort of thing that they do in the movie fails miserably. It is a bad movie. I mean, this is a dog on biblical levels. And also, <clears throat> spoiler alert, but it can't really be a spoiler. If you've seen the trailers for this movie, you know that featured in the trailer... In all the trailers that I saw in the theater and some of the commercials I've seen on TV, Michael Keaton is featured in the trailer, okay? Well, I got news for you. Michael Keaton's not in the movie, unless you count the post and credit scene where he pops in for two minutes. This has got to be the first movie I've ever seen where they feature an A-list actor like Michael Keaton in the trailer, like prominently in the trailer, and he's not in the movie proper, like, if you get up when the credits start, the end credit stuff, if you get up and walk out, you're not going to see Michael Keaton. And you will have wondered, wow, why is Michael Keaton in the trailer when he's not in the goddamn movie? Well, that's because he, I don't know, they wanted to, that's how desperate I think they were and how much the studio knew that the movie was a piece of shit. So they said, put Michael Keaton in the trailer and let's at least have a big opening weekend. And that's what's going to happen. It's gonna, this weekend, it's going to do huge. And then it's going to drop off. I think even comic book fans... Um, you know, even the fans who have no discerning taste whatsoever in terms of what... Even fans that went back and saw that stupid-ass Spider-Man movie three and four times won't like this. This is as bad as it gets. This is as bad a comic book movie as you can possibly imagine. Um, and again, I think it, it must, have, must hold some sort of record in that, or must be the first movie of its kind to actually feature an A-list uh, uh, movie star in its trailer, and he's not in the movie. So... Um, this is terrible. This is, and I'm not, I'm not a big comic book guy, but even fans of comic book movies, I think you guys will even say, yeah, this is crap. One of the worst movies of the year is Morbius, a disaster of biblical proportions. Bad on every level. Storyline, acting-wise, character-wise, special effects-wise, action scenes, everything about this movie is beyond subpar. Morbius, awful. Now, 
On to the second movie that's also shitty, is Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, the new movie from The Daniels. These are two guys named Daniel, who made a really terrific movie a few years ago called Swiss Army Man, which was Paul Dano <clears throat> and uh, Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe plays a dead guy. Paul Dano's on an island. He makes friends with the dead guy, and that's what the movie's about. It's about this guy existing on this island with this dead guy, this corpse that farts a lot. Um, <clears throat> a very original movie, really well done. It's a 98-minute fart joke, but it all worked, and I really liked it. I liked its originality. I especially liked Daniel Radcliffe's performance as the dead guy, and I thought it was original, and it was entertaining and weird, and I liked it. This is the latest movie from these guys, and they have turned the corner and become pretentious as fuck, because that's exactly what this movie is. Everything, everywhere, all at once stars Michelle Yeoh, the great, the incredible Michelle Yeoh, um, who is sort of in the twilight of her career, um, especially as an action star, uh, which unfortunately is the case with a lot of uh, actresses. She moved on from what she was best known as, which is an incredible martial artist, terrific actress, who made insane Hong Kong films with the likes of Jackie Chan and Sammo Hung and Chow Yun-Fat back in the day, uh, uh, you know, uh, where she became like a mega martial arts star in Hong Kong. And she kicks massive ass, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, tons of other really great films. Um, she's in Crazy Rich Asians uh, and, 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 and some other really great movies. She's a fantastic actress, a, a, a kick-ass martial artist. And this would seem, and, and if any movie, if any, I'm sorry, if any actress deserves a movie dedicated to her to do a career-defining role, it's Michelle Yeoh. It is if anyone deserves a tribute to greatness for being around and doing so many amazing things and being just a kick-ass martial artist and actress and producer, powerful woman, great screen presence, gorgeous. If anybody deserves that kind of career tribute movie, it's her. This ain't it. And a lot of people think it is. And most people like this movie. I hate this movie. I hate it. Everything, everywhere, all at once is supposed to be this big tribute to Michelle Yeoh. It's a fucking mess. It's a recycled pile of nonsense. It is philosophical crap. Um, it's got other great people in it. Jamie Lee Curtis is in it. The guy who played Short Round and Data from the 80s. He's back in it, doing the best they can. James Hong is in it. Uh, Stephanie Hsu, who's actually very good in the film, is in it. Jamie Lee Curtis is in it as well. Um, but it is just a bunch of nonsense. Let me just quickly, uh, this is, these, are the, these are the notes that I wrote. This is what I wrote after I saw the movie. I saw it at a press screening about a week and a half ago. And on the L ride home, I cut my phone out and I was just, I jotted down something that I thought of. Th these, th these are my first thoughts. This is my first sentences and thoughts that I thought of immediately after seeing Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, which, in addition to being a shitty movie, was insanely disappointing for me. Like, I was really looking forward to it. I love Michelle Yeoh, and like I said, if any actress or any artist or any beautiful woman deserves, uh, you know, like, in the twilight of her career, which is really sad to say, but in terms of, like, action and stuff like that, it's true in Hollywood standards. She's in her late 50s. You know, that's the way Hollywood is. It sucks, but it's true. But if anybody deserves a tribute... It's her. And this fails on every, every single level, insulting on every level. Here's what I said <clears throat> after, right after I saw the movie. If you're wondering what would happen if two not-at-all-clever filmmakers hung out together every night, blowing weed, dropping acid, and watching The Matrix over and over and over again for about 20 years straight, this is the thing that would happen. It, uh, it is a massively disappointing mashup of philosophical nonsense stupid sight gags, really poorly staged martial arts fights, and it turns deadly dull and repetitively loud after 30 minutes, and then it never, ever ends. Michelle Yeoh has a bit of fun. Jamie Lee Curtis is very amusing, uh, and Short Round got himself some work. There are lots of dildos, butt plugs, and googly eyes with, with uh, uh, or rocks, I should say. Let me start that again. There are lots of dildos, butt plugs, and rocks with googly eyes stuck to them on display here, and they stand in for insight and cleverness, because insight and cleverness is something that this movie does not have at all. And it's not the dildos, the butt plugs, or the rocks' fault. They're fine. It's the movie around them that sucks. The film is bad. It's not just bad, it's self-important and bad. It's self-importantly bad, which makes it even worse. So on the plus side, though, I got to see the always wonderful uh, Jenny Slate for a few minutes. Jenny Slate's in it for a few minutes. And so there's that, I guess. And it's a total misfire on every level, in every way, all at once.
So, uh, it is a, uh, it's a terrible movie. It is pretentious, and it is, uh, it is way over the top. It is not nearly as smart as it thinks it is. All this philosophical stuff that it has about life, and it's about, uh, it's basically about Michelle Yeoh plays a, a, a woman who's stuck in a marriage. Uh, she's running a laundromat. Her father, played by James Hong, has come down. He's 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 prejudiced, uh, and she has to treat him. And it's a it's a there's a big birthday party that they're planning, and suddenly, uh, and she has to go and pay her taxes. She is being audited by the taxes by the tax uh, by the IRS, and the IRS agent who is doing this audit is very mean, played by Jamie Lee Curtis under a lot of old woman makeup and fat in a fat suit. And it's about them going to this, the family going to this meeting at the IRS in order to pay it off. And then something weird happens. Her husband is not himself. And suddenly she realizes that she's in a multiverse and she can jump between different points in her life to change the course of what happens in her life, to change her life, to change her character, to change her. And then it becomes a multiverse thing. Boy, we all know how much I love multiverses. I guess I hate multiverses unless they're done well. This movie owes so much to The Matrix, it's not even funny. It owes to other movies that are much better. Um, and none of the philosophy in the movie or what this movie is about, embrace life and, you know, and, and, and love the people that you're with and love the, the families that you're with. It's all a bunch of horse shit. It's all a bunch of nonsense. It's all a bunch of recycled psycho babble crap. And I didn't care about anything that happened. I didn't care about any people in it. Not once was I moved emotionally by this movie that goes way out of its way to try to move you emotionally. And it fails miserably. And then on the simplest of levels, besides being pretentious and a movie that's supposed to be about philosophical, loving your life, and look what would happen if you did this, how much your life would change and how much you would change. And it does it in, so, in, in, in all these Look how clever we are ways, and look how look how how clever this is, and how clever. And at the, at one point, there's a there's a reference to ratatouille, but it's a raccoon on top of a a, a sushi chef's head. I don't understand why that's supposed to be clever. People in the screening room were laughing their asses off. Whoa, raccoonatouille! It's a raccoon on top of the guy's head. How's that funny? What is that even? How is that even clever? I, I don't even understand it. None of it is clever. None of it is smart. None of it is heartfelt. And then on the simplest of levels, the entertainment level, it doesn't work. The first 20 minutes, the setup is pretty cool. The way it's set up, and then once the plot kicks in, and the multiverses, and the jumping here, and the jumping there, and the hot dog fingers, and all this other nonsense happens, it just becomes a pretentious gobbledygook of images that, that are stupid and not nearly as clever as these goddamn filmmakers think they are. And it just becomes this stupid movie that is an insult to Michelle Yeoh, I think. And, and then on the simplest of levels, the fight scenes, and you've got martial, you've got martial artists that, that can kick ass in this movie. You've got Michelle Yeoh in this movie, and you horribly stage the fight scenes. The martial arts fight scenes in this movie are terribly staged and even worse shot and edited. They're cut together and shot terribly. These Daniels guys don't know how to stage and cut a fight scene to save their lives. The fight scenes in this movie are embarrassing, especially if you've seen the ton of Michelle Yeoh movies from the past where her fight scenes are not only magnificent and powerful and strong, but they're beautifully shot and beautifully choreographed. None of that happens in any of the fight scenes in this movie. If you're a martial arts fan and you like the fight scenes in this movie, you're not a martial arts fan. You don't know what good martial arts uh, action movies are. You don't. They're terrible. So that takes out a good portion of the movie. The fight scenes are terrible. The special effects are stupid. Uh, uh, all of the images and stuff that are thrown at you are done in such a pretentious way. Uh, these guys, like I said, in what I wrote, they got high and they watched The Matrix a lot. That's the big one. But then there's other, like 2001 is obviously a big one here. There's a whole section in the movie where... They're in the middle, like, it's like the beginning of the, they do a whole thing about 2001, which doesn't work. It's not, oh, look, it's like the, the, the directors are saying, hey, in order to make this look really smart and really clever, let's do a really stupid satirical take on 2001. Let's do a take on 2001 as though we know what 2001 really is, but they don't. They don't understand what they're making fun of, and that's one of the huge problems of this movie. They don't understand any of the genres in which they are either paying tribute to or making fun of. They don't understand the genres. They don't understand philosophical drama. They don't understand science fiction. They don't understand martial arts movies. And they combine it all to a large blob of shit. Jenny Slate is the best thing in the movie. Best thing in the movie. Um, uh, Stephanie Hsu, 
uh, who plays uh, Michelle Yeoh's daughter, and then another huge, you know, like an, another huge part in all the multiverse bullshit. She's quite good in it. But outside of that, Michelle Yeoh has some moments because she rules, because she's Michelle Yeoh. Outside of that, it is a bunch of horse shit. And people are falling for it. Oh, are people falling for it. It's colorful and it's loud and all this other bullshit. And it plays with the format. You're watching a movie within a movie, but we know it's a movie. The filmmakers know it. The actors and actresses in it know that they're an actor. The actors in it know that she's Michelle Yeoh. It's supposed to work on all these different levels. It is a bunch of massive horse shit. So it's bad, but it thinks it's not bad. That's the problem. It's pretentious. It's pretentiously awful, and it is self-important. They're not making any statements. It's loud. It never ends. It is After a half an hour, I couldn't wait for the goddamn thing to end. And there's a moment in the movie when I was like, oh, please end, and it didn't, and it went on for like another 45 minutes. It's a terrible movie. You're going to read a lot of good reviews on it. I'm probably going to be the only one in the world that hates it. Maybe there's one or two people out there, but everything, everywhere, all at once is shit. And what makes it worse is it's pretentious shit. And the difference between Morbius and uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once is that one movie I think knows it's bad and everybody involved in it thinks it's bad and knows it's bad. That would be Morbius. But the worst crime is the movie that doesn't know it's bad and that the people in it think it's brilliant and that the people who made it think it's brilliant. But it's not brilliant. It's horse shit and it's bad. So if I had to actually pet put, if someone put a gun to my head, which movie would I watch again? I'd watch Morbius again, like that. That's it. So, Morbius, crap. Bad weekend at the movies, but even worse, pretentious waste of Michelle Yeoh, and an insult, in fact, to her and her career, is this pretentious piece of shit, everything, everywhere, all at once. So, they're both horrible, but again, gun to my head, can't wait to see Morbius again.